this was courtesy of Hypebeast and it's featuring the Virgil Abloh Co's um, courtesy of Architect exhibition that happened in Art Basel, Miami, which just happened. I think it's already all finished. So the reason why this stuff is obviously important is because for the most part, Virgil's legacy also is just in, incredible work ethic. He left behind so many, you know, incomplete and half complete projects that are still being kind of churned out now to this day. So when they went, when they did this exhibition, they put this together, there was obviously an opportunity for them to kind of showcase some of the models that are due to come up that we haven't actually seen coming up maybe in the future. And obviously Hypebeast were able to take um, some pictures of the exhibition and show us. But I'll quickly read you the, uh, the, the text before we go to the pictures. It's a set to officially open on December the 1st. We now have an inside look at the Virgil, the codes, courtesy of architects of exhibition. Um, taking place during Zion Miami, the limited shoe showcase, the, sorry, the limited time showcase, represented by Nike and VA Securities, and has taken over the city's Ruber Museum. According to Nike and VA Security, the exhibition honors Virgil's creative legacy, highlighting his long term partnership with Nike and shares the design methodologies that were central to his creative identity. The exhibition and its related program are designed to showcase these methodological uh, principles known as ABLO codes, which are meant to be applicable to any medium. Product or space, the codes made his work, and particularly the 10 with Nike both easily identifiable and transferable. I'm wondering, or translatable, I'm wondering, right, if there's ever going to be a time in the future where somebody really smart who can program is going to be able to put together some sort of AI that can essentially churn out Virgil level ideas. You know how everyone's going crazy with this chat AI thing going on at the moment where you can essentially input um, certain parameters like, you know, maybe you're saying, hey, I want to write an article about the downfall of sneakers in 2023. And then this uh, chat AI will churn out, you know, a, a flipping one sheet of the downfall of the sneakers in 2023. Like people are going crazy and being really crazy with it. People are, you know, making briefs. People are doing Q&As, um, four bits of code. Like it's crazy what they're doing with it. I wonder, given all the information about Virgil's out there, given the countless amounts of hours of content he's recorded, I wonder if it's possible to kind of get all that information, get some of his tenets, some of his principles, and put all those into an AI and sort of allow it to sort of be able to present Virgil level ideas. Maybe not in, maybe text is probably the wrong way. Maybe it is the easiest way to do it. Because I don't, actually, it's not. I rewind because there's the other AI at the moment where you can churn out images. And it kind of gives you, you know, I think someone did an image of like people that didn't exist from like the 80s that were at some metal show or something. So that would be pretty cool going forward. I wonder if that could be a thing. Anyway, continue with the article. Helping Mark Design Miami this year, the exhibition will serve to express the codes that guide and shape the future of Nike partnership with the Virgil's Abloh Securities, informing the ongoing collaboration in output established by the architect, by architect, sorry, architecture, that's his um, platform that he's got, um, helmed with mahus and who by mahus mahus and chloe sultan architect's future project will reflect on and interpret the code according to nike the goal is to further ablo's legacy and individual practice and to establish the framework for an enduring open source institution and invitation to design the anchored in inspirational storytelling so let's go up and just look at the image because these are the most important things right because We've already spoken about some of the stuff Virgil Abloh Securities is doing in the future. So pick up Shannon Ablo and all those things moving forward. So, so far from what we've seen in this picture here, which showcases the variations of the Air Force Ones, we've seen these. These are the complex Air Force Ones, right? If I'm not mistaken. If I'm not mistaken, the ones on the left-hand side, those were the shoes that he might have did with Essence. You remember when he was at, he went to Essence um, Studio, I think, or something, and he presented, he, I think he was doing some sort of live video collaboration, I forgot what it was, and he was like drawing on all the soles. This is when he was doing all that stuff on the midsoles, and I still do that to this day, so, you know, respect to his legacy and RIP to the GOAT. But I think that was part of that, if I'm not mistaken. You've got the complex Air Force Ones here with a silver foil, then you've got um, I forgot what the black ones are called, but you got the black ones, you got the blue, these are part of the gallery ones, I guess they're dropping into the gallery exhibition. So all three of these are already dropped. And then the ones here, which are kind of following the example of the kind of the hiking system, whatever it's called, lacing that goes on top, which is pretty cool. I don't think it works the greatest on Air Force Ones, if I'm completely honest, in terms of the silhouette. It's a bit too bulky for that, but I do like that they've done it. They've got it in a blue... Um, with the different heel type color here in terms of white, you've got it in the yellow, and you've got it in this kind of fuchsia pinky type of color. And I also do like the addition of the black midsoles. 
And I guess the cool thing about this is that you can imagine him sitting down and just churning out colorway after colorway. And I think that's one one thing I remember that French guy um, who was who owns a car dealership. Uh, he was talking on complex about Virgil and saying that how there's so many other cool colorways and stuff that he's done that probably never see the light of day and the reason why I reckon that's possible is because of his design approach uh, or his you know methodology his practice the way he kind of approaches it he kind of did it in some sort of there's, there's probably some sort of math, math, mathematical equation behind it or some really strict parameters that he used and then you just kind of input color input color and just kind of you know use your eye and your senses to determine what kind of hits and what doesn't but you can churn out so many whereas if you're a proper sneakerhead like i am and you're you know you're obsessed with this stuff to the point where it gets crazy you can really obsess over minor and insignificant details and it kind of drives the thing crap. I mean, it makes it dead. It doesn't really spark any new ideas and you don't necessarily churn out a lot of colorways because you're more worried about the mud guard. You're worried about the flipping material of the heel tab. You're worried about what the lace tips look like when actually if you focus on just getting the base colorways done, the materials will kind of make sense after the fact and you can kind of, you know, churn through and run through many more ideas. My favorite of these that haven't come out so far definitely be these all green pine green type looking numbers here with the classic silver swoosh and the you know overstitch on your on it and obviously the kind of off white beaverton stamp on the inside and then also this purple number here they look beautiful and whatever this color is also this is like I don't know if this is like an orange or a mud whatever it may be it's quite translucent it's got like a translucent heel tab translucent sole with the area on it is pretty cool and the funny thing is, if I'm not mistaken, Air Force Ones do have a concealed air bubble, but it's something that not a lot of people kind of actually even know anything about, especially because Air Force Ones never really were about showing the bubble. So I've always liked the addition of this air on the midsole with the quotation marks. Helps to give the shoe a little bit of a Air Maxi type of feel, even though they're the complete opposite of what you would describe a traditional Air Max One to be, or an Air Max in general. But I do like the look of those, 100, 100%. Let me move on. We've got a showcase of dunks. These dunks to this day, I have to be honest, I never really liked them. Um, I know a lot of people went crazy for them. And I think the idea behind them and the approach and the ability to put all these essentially limited edition shoes with various slight variations behind them out and into people's hands was awesome to see. Um, I find it funny how when Virgil was alive, he took offense to the fact that people were doing mock-ups of the colorways and they weren't that impressive. Considering how much he smashed the first collaboration with Nike 10 and he took it as a bit of an offense. But if anything, I think now that he's passed and some time has gone by, it's actually a far better representation of his ability to design shoes and put colorways together that he has such a varied catalog or like a, you know, he's not just, he, he didn't just try and repeat the success of the Nike 10. He did try and do something a bit different. He did try and approach the dunk a little bit different with this addition of these kind of hiking type laces on the top which i think were worked pretty well in this model for some reason even though again i don't associate dunks with any sort of outdoor wear or any sort of hiking or any kind of adventure or anything in any sort of way unless adventure to you includes going to flat white and buying a really you know overpriced flipping scarf from acne or something these don't really spark that for me but he did actually make them like that and also i feel like they're one of the more versatile and easily to interpret um, sneakers in terms of your wardrobe that he probably put out in a long time and judging by the amount of people that I see wearing them day in day out with just regular fits I definitely think he kind of smashed it with those ones but for me no not really I never really liked them obviously the black and silver ones are flipping amazing the first ones but I think they're the, the most limited edition ones the ones that are like all black with the silver he's kind of classic sort of like Virgil Abloh's um, colorway I think black all black silver swoosh with white laces but the dunks I'm not really a big fan of so I'll kind of skip those keep that one moving and then I think there's some more images here. Hopefully, it's the one. Is the one I'm sure I'm waiting for? Okay, so hey, there's not no more images. I thought there was a Jordan. I thought there was a Jordan in here as well. This is him feature. I think this is that. Was that his house or that was that the Dieter Ramos? The Dieter Ramos house. I think that's maybe Dieter Ramos house. But yeah, iconic picture here with a. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is a supreme. If I'm not mistaken, this is a supreme. What you call it? Why? Um. Uh, what would you call it? A supreme box logo that he designed i'm pretty sure is that the story behind it the one with chief keys i'm not sure what the story is behind it or is it something that was never made i'm not too sure but if someone knows i forgot the story behind the whole chief keith box logo that he has everywhere um but i thought all oh, this is pretty cool but if i'm not mistaken wasn't there more wasn't there like a, a jordan if i'm not mistaken that someone pictured also 
or it's only them maybe it was just those let me just see if another one Dizine has any more oh yeah that's the one yeah see there's like a fairy shoe too so whatever this is this is courtesy of Dizine so whatever this is there's another shoe here also so as you can see with the Air Force Ones there's loads of interesting colorways of shoes here that we can see obviously most of them are Louis Vuitton um, things I love this colorway here it looks like a Captain America colorway this is absolutely brilliant right for sure oh man where'd where, where they go where'd they go okay cool let's go back there I don't know what I did that for go back but this Captain America colorway here is definitely one of my favorites there's one here with the Ghana flag on the back of it which is fucking hard body if you know anything about Air Force Ones and you know with the flags on the back you'll know what that means there's this amazing one here down below that's all been furred out which looks flipping special there's another one here with the Lakers colorway with the um which has kind of been given that thing that he did with these Air Force Ones where he kind of give it kind of made it look like it's a mid that's been stuck inside of a low so there's always excess material if you can see here right it kind of looks like there's two shoes being put in it's like an Air Force One low and then there's a mid that he's kind of looks like he's cut the top of a mid off with scissors and sort of just chucked it on on the inside I love the look at that that gold number if I'm not mistaken that came out right there's like a gold foiled LV logo number there's a nice one here in terms of the blue red and pink also blue black and pink which kind of makes me oh actually there's another one here let's skip that one this this is giving me um uh marvel wolverine kind of bape you know type logo feelings on that one or collaborations so i kind of skipped it once again because my fat fingers don't do anything right I go back again i love this one at the top here this is beautiful it's the lv collaboration and it's got a solid pink bright bright pink sole and the up has been obviously done with um the lv monogram i think they look really really special and some other bits and bobs here too like the white with the black one is obviously really nice and this one also but i've oh look at that there's a really cool one there last one before we move on look at this this one's really nice also this one with this tip i don't know what this is where the inspiration came from but i like this it's got like a pink midsole with this very interesting like blue and pink like design on the tip of it which looks really really cool it kind of reminds me of an old hirachi light or something i really like the look of those those look really 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 nice but what an inspiring expression to be a part of and the amount of work this guy was able to do in such a short space of time is crazy these are the shoes that he's designed from the ground up i think the first kind of signature virgil abloh design shoe which unfortunately he didn't you know wasn't around to kind of see um it launch or anything but i do like the look of those i think they're going to be surprisingly popular um but i do like them because they kind of remind me of my favorite um division in nike which is definitely acgs or condition gear so they're definitely giving me lava dome kind of style uh, vibes i like that he's got the addition of the classic kind of virgil abloh color in the black with the silver see that one there that's a classic color he does it in every single shoe and then you've got different variations of it with like a translucent uh, mid, um, swoosh there and everything else i don't look at those and you've also got the Air Force Ones here, the new ones that he's put out that look really cool also. It feels like they're like an upgraded model of a Air Force One mid. He's kind of taken a classic Air Force One model and sort of added a really rugged outsole on them, um, changed some of the proportions on the upper as well, changed the materials, sort of making them translucent here and there. And yeah, they look really, really fantastic. I can't wait to see some of this stuff in real life and hopefully we get some of this stuff showcased in London because it seems like they, these things visit everywhere else apart from flipping London. And there's a cool little sound design scape here as well here, designed there. I'm not sure if that's designed by, but that looks absolutely amazing. Imagine seeing that in a club. That reminds me of uh, the Paradise Loft, um, all, all the Loft days, right? Where it was all about kind of um, the sound and it wasn't necessarily about the DJ. So you'd be able to kind of make these crazy bespoke sound systems. People would be sitting down, just chilling, listening to music. And it was just one turntable no mixing included or whatnot so you could really be a bit more creative in terms of how you displayed and set up your equipment but that looks fucking beautiful so can't wait to see more of this going forward like i said i hope we can see um these type of exhibitions in london sometime soon because that would be flipping awesome to really see that really really well cannot wait to see more but yeah um rp virgil big up the exhibition looks really cool out there in miami art basel hopefully we see more of it going forward Hopefully we see more of it going forward.